Working together, one team, getting it done. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNS. We're here at Norfolk Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia, where Newport News Shipbuilding's Mobile Experience trailer is on display. We'll have more on that coming up a little later. Also on the way, Newport News Shipbuilding is busier than ever, and it takes teamwork to get the job done. We'll tell you what that's all about. And she's beginning a brand new career working in the foundry. We'll show you how this shipbuilder is breaking the mold while continuing a family legacy. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, from new construction to overhauls to maintenance availabilities, the dry docks at Newport News Shipbuilding are full up. Aaron Pritchett with our communications division tells us how it takes many people working together as one team to get the job done. We're here 200 feet high above the shipyard on the 1050 metric ton Blue Goliath Gantry Crane, also known as Big Blue. And behind me, it may look like just another ordinary day here at Newport News Shipbuilding. But if you take a closer look, we're busier than ever. Shipbuilders are hard at work as our dry docks are full for the very first time in over a decade. You know, I feel we're right back into that exciting time of just a, just a volume of work in every aspect of shipbuilding and ship repairs. And it ties right into you know, where we are with transforming the business because with this kind of volume of work and all the different aspects of that work, it's exactly what we need to do to be successful. From the ongoing construction of the second Ford class aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy CVN-79 in Dry Dock 12 to the impressive Virginia class submarine program churning out two boats per year, to the refueling and complex overhaul of USS George Washington CVN-73 and Dry Dock 11, being busy is an understatement. There's also the continued inactivation of the Enterprise CVN-65, and that's still not the half of it. Newport News Shipbuilding is filling up even more of our dry docks by taking the carrier and submarine fleet support program to a whole new level. I think a lot of times the people, we lose sight of the learning process that comes with fleet support because, uh, like I said, uh, a lot of people don't know that we send people off site and the fact that we have fleet support here in the yard, I think it's, I think it's a, a great learning process and uh, just, just a room for growth as far as the shipyard. The Navy talks about a 355 to ship Navy. In order to get there, you really got to maintain what's out there today. And whereas we run these ships harder and harder, the opportunity is there for the maintenance of them that need, must be done. And if you go and look at it, right, the Ford just came back in for a 12-month PSA. Uh, you go look at Dry Docks 1 and 4. We've got both uh, Columbus and Helena in there. And then down at the pier, we just brought in the Boise. So uh, it's getting back, reconstituting that workforce, reconstituting that business, the sub overhaul side, along with bringing the Ford back that we just delivered. So uh, it's, it's good times. It's a pretty big responsibility uh, considering what we're doing. Because I came from carrier overhaul, so working on those subs, I'm learning different things and how they do things fleet support wise. It's a good learning experience for sure. It's very fulfilling. You know that the people that you work with and yourself are all trying to strive for a common goal. And that's why we strive to go out every day and give it 100%. And that's what me and a lot of the guys that I work with take the most pride in is being able to get it done, get it done right the first time, and it actually going out and performing. Fleet support is all about doing those and supporting those smaller availabilities, which are key, um, obviously, to get a ship to 50 year in the case of a carrier, or 30 years in the case of a submarine. So uh, they come in, they've got to be maintained, or, or, or we just wouldn't get there from here. We are slam full, but that's an exciting time, and it's a good thing. And it's because of the good work we've been doing, every shipbuilder has really made it possible for us to convince our customer that this is where you want to bring your ships, this is where you want to build them, this is where you, where you want to overhaul them. Newport News is where you get the best value. No matter where you work or what job you have, everyone plays a vital role in the success of Newport News Shipbuilding. Uh, the future is bright 
and uh, to think back about where we were in the past and where we are now and how exciting that is, or to be a brand new shipbuilder that's just come in because a lot of new shipbuilders are in the yard now, to think about their future and what they have in front of us. I, I don't know how you can't possibly be excited and proud to be part of Newport News Shipbuilding right now. Definitely exciting times here at Newport News Shipbuilding. And no matter what role you play here in our company, we are one team moving forward and helping to provide the greatest ships in the world for the U.S. Navy. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, thanks so much, Aaron. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. Newport News Shipbuilding sponsors Pride Fest in Norfolk. Thousands of people were on hand as shipbuilders volunteered at the NNS booth, giving away t-shirts and other promotional items as part of the day-long festival. Shipbuilders also talked with people about careers in shipbuilding and the shipyard's focus on inclusion and diversity. This is for everyone. It's um, being an advocate for everyone and their uniqueness. It's an honor for me to be here today representing Newport News Shipbuilding. This is a very important part of our community and we want to be here to support. And Newport News Shipbuilding was also a sponsor of the Latino Music Festival in Norfolk. That event was held July 28th and included great music, food, and shipbuilders working to spread the message about opportunities at Newport News Shipbuilding. It's a great new place to get new company logoed clothes and merchandise. The new Spear and Gear store is now open online. The store will also feature pop-up locations like this first one held in July at The Rock. Keep an eye out for future announcements on the next pop-ups. And the online store is open to the public and can be found at nnsspearandgear.com. Well, as we mentioned a little earlier, we're at Norfolk Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia, where Newport News Shipbuilding is showing off the MX trailer. More than 200 people took a tour on July 31st. The event was an opportunity for the two shipyards to work together. The collaboration is important to ensure changes in technology and digital shipbuilding tools are part of the dialogue as both shipyards work to get ships to the Navy to defend the country. So I'm really excited to be a part of this digital transformation. Now, I've been thinking about this stuff for a while. I've worked over at our shipyard in, uh, from the deck plate to design and engineering uh, and then also as a foreman and you know having that kind of perspective being able to see things that could really be useful down on the deck plate and things that could really be useful in the office and kind of merging those two together, I mean, that's what really energizes me and, and keeps me interested in the job that I do every day. You know, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You know, if you have other entities that are working on similar stuff to you that have already developed these technologies and features and abilities, why not try and leverage that instead of, you know, doing it again? And the MX trailer will continue to tour with a number of stops at college campuses this fall. Well, if you haven't noticed, the skyline has changed somewhat at Newport News Shipbuilding. The new 315-ton Goliath gantry crane is now fully assembled. Megan Satry, our summer intern, takes a look at this giant. High above the yard, the new 315 metric ton Goliath gantry crane is now Newport News Shipbuilding's tallest structure. The crane left Poland earlier this year. It took two weeks and two different shipments to arrive here in Newport News. Assembly started in April and shipbuilders painted on the final letters last month. The new crane will replace the 49-year-old Green Goliath gantry crane. But that crane isn't coming down just yet. It will remain in use for the overhaul of USS George Washington CBN-73. The green crane was basically a construction crane. I think when they built that in 69 that they never envisioned that it would be a refueling crane like this crane is. This, this new crane has been from day one a refueling crane and the design attributes for it are a whole lot different than it was for that crane when it was built in 1969. It has to meet a lot higher hurricane standards, a lot of the design standards that the Navy requires for refueling is in this crane that would not have been in the green crane back in that day. But it's been rewarding to see the girders up. I think it's where it needs to be and we'll go on to the next step of turning this thing on in the next couple of months. 
The new crane is now the tallest crane here at the shipyard, standing 241 feet tall. So it's been a real honor and privilege for me to work on it. I work with a great bunch of people. Um, great companies have helped us with this, and it's you do nothing by yourself, so you got to have a great team of folks help you. More work and testing will continue. The crane is expected to be operational late next year. This new crane will help shipbuilders fulfill the motto of always good ships. For Focus NNS, I'm Megan Satry. Back to you, Brian. All right, Megan, thanks so much, and good job this summer. Well, age is just a number. That attitude is especially true for shipbuilder Norma Fenton. She overcame a number of obstacles to continue a family legacy. Lena Wallace with our communications division has more on this fifth generation shipbuilder. When people reach a certain age, many are thinking about retirement, but not everyone. Here at the Foundry, there's a relatively new shipbuilder who decided it's time to continue her family legacy. Her name is Norma Fenton, and her motivation stems from her family's hard work and dedication, a family of shipbuilders. My family has always either been in the military or participated by working in a shipbuilding industry to provide the equipment necessary to defend our country. I'm very proud to be continuing that legacy. I had wanted to come to the shipyard, but I needed a degree to do what I do. So I went back to school after I got laid off, and it turned out to be a great career decision. I didn't come in until I was 55. Don't think that age is held against you. This is a very diverse place with many different age groups. So you can be a teenager all the way up to in your 70s I've met people. Norma is my mentor. I look at her as a wealth of information. I see the diversity here, black, white, purple, 18-year-old, uh, 25-year-old, 50-year-old. We've got folks that came in in their 60s and have contributed immediately, so it's a great place where you can make an impact right away. I find that in the yard, I hear a lot of, that's the way we've always done it. And you have to be able to embrace new ideas and new feelings about how to get things done that may be different than what you're used to practicing. My sense of it is that the diversity is we have folks with lots of different backgrounds. The inclusion part of it is that we provide a method for those folks with different backgrounds to have a voice at the table so that we can take full advantage of their talent. There are lots of opportunities, and if you don't like the first thing you land in, there are so many different avenues that you can pursue. You don't have to get stuck into one path. You can move around and do different things here at the yard. It makes me very proud to be a fifth generation shipbuilder. Started out with my great great grandfather, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, and now me. Vincent encourages others, no matter what their age, to follow their passion and hopefully find it here at Newport News Shipbuilding. For Focus NNS, I'm Lena Wallace. Back to you, Brian. All right, very inspiring. Thanks so much, Lena. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS. Remember, don't miss out on very important and timely information. Download our free app, NNS To Go. It's available in the Google and Apple stores on your smartphones and tablets. And don't forget to check out the latest news in our weekly publication, Currents. And remember, Focus NNS is available on numerous city stations and channels across Virginia. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.